I said to myself, you wrote this off way too long. You wrote this religion off way too easy. And I became upset with myself because I considered myself studious. I considered myself open-minded. I considered myself having an intellect. So I said, you wrote this off way too easy. So to speed it up, to get there in two minutes, I got a copy of the Quran. Because I asked them about the brief, you know, what is your religion about? They told me God is one, you know, we live in the prophets. They started naming names like Moses, David, Jesus. I said, wait a minute, where did you get those names? They're in the Quran. I said, okay, do you have a Quran? Can I have one? Because I believed that a religion was justified by its book. If your religion is true, it must be justified by its book. It must be, there must be something concrete not just what you say or what this person does or what this person says. There must be something concrete that I can have passed down to me, that I can pass down to someone else that validifies this religion, that, that validates it. So I asked them for a Quran. And when I started reading the Quran, in the first two chapters I started getting to names that I remembered. I started reading the story of Moses, the story of David, the story of Jesus, the story of Harun, of Abraham. And what I realized that these stories were different than any story I've ever seen in the Bible. These taught that these people were at the highest echelon of the society. They were at the highest peak of morality. They were the people to be followed. They were the guiding example. Not only did they command the people to do good, they were the living example of it. And this to me was what made sense. This was what I was looking for. This was the people that I could follow. These were prophets. This was what I could call a prophet. So needless to say, I kept reading through the Quran, but I had given my heart to this book after the, the second or third chapter. I had said to myself that I don't care what this religion is, but if this is the book that justifies it, I want to be whatever these people are. And I want to be whatever this book tells me I need to be. And I would read in the book that it said that Allah has called us Muslims. So I said, I'm a Muslim. All alone in my room. I said, I'm a Muslim. And I went back to the mosque the next day. Three, three days later. I read the whole Quran from beginning to end in three days. And I went back to the mosque because I wanted to be a Muslim. And I knocked on the door and it was locked. <laughs> Muslims always come. <laughs> Muslims always come to the mosque on Fridays in 1998 except uh, on Fridays. So the guy at the gas station told me, he said, if you're looking for the Muslims, they'll be back on Friday. <laughs> alhamdulillah now, alhamdulillah, they have five salah a day in, in, in the masjid in Jackson, I mean in, in Greenville, South Carolina. They have an Islamic school there. Um, alhamdulillah, praise be to God. So I came back on Friday and I took my shahada. You know, I, I said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu Muhammad Rasulullah. I believe there's no God but Allah and that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. Because I, when I learned about Muhammad, I said to myself that if God chose him to reveal this book, then he's a prophet. He has to be. This book, you don't, you, don't, you don't pour water through a dirty pipe and get clean water at the other end. It doesn't happen. You don't get this pure of a book through a man that's not this pure. So I became a Muslim and needless to say that the rest is history, and I hope that if nothing else has benefited you, just to know that there are people out there just like me. There's lots of us, you know, there's lots of us. There's 10 million Muslims in this country, and growing. Growing at a percentage rate that is mind-boggling to people of statistics. People who study gro growth of group populations, of religions, of races, of things like that, when they look at the percentage of the growth of Islam, it boggles their mind. Not only does it boggle their mind, but the fact that after 9-11 it doubled and quadrupled, boggles their mind. Everyone said, it'll go downhill. I was Muslim in 9-11. They said, we're done now. We're done. It's all over for us. You know, and I'm a person, I'm a, I'm a student of psychology now and sociology, so I, I like to think of myself as looking, being able to look forward. I look farther than, than right in front of me. I said to myself, you know what? We're not done. This is the beginning. I said this is God's wake up call to the world. And to us. That why are you hiding? Why are you hiding? You're begging for the microphone, you're begging for the spotlight, 
while you're hiding in a dark corner. You want the spotlight? You got it. And we've had it since 9-11. We've had it. The spotlight is on Islam and the Muslims. Everybody wants to know what the Muslims saying. What are they talking about? Everything, everything. Go, go, go pull up today's uh, foxnews.com. The top item is about a man in Sudan who got expelled from the country for naming a teddy bear Muhammad. That's news. That's news. That's top news item. Why? Because it has, it's, it's, it's about Muslims. That's it. That's the only reason it's a top news item. So I just want you to know that we're out there and we're real people. And we believe in something that is far, far, far greater than anything you've ever seen on TV. Anything you've ever read about in any book about Islam is far greater than that. It's far more beautiful than that. God is far greater than anything you've ever tried to imagine in your mind. The mind cannot comprehend it. Cannot, cannot begin. It's like casting a, a drop off your fingertip in the ocean. Doesn't do justice. Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a man like you've never read about. This is why we got so angry. And when, when, when they wrote these cartoons about him in, in Denmark. Maybe a lot of us overreacted. Yes, we overreacted. But if someone insulted your mother, most of us probably would overreact just because we love them so much. We love him so much. Because he gave us this pure religion, this great way of life that has changed me from being somebody that nobody wanted to be around to somebody who now wants to be around everyone because I want them to know where I've been and what I've come through. And even though my grandmother passed away in 2002, and my parents are not Muslim yet, I'm working on them, they are very, staunch, they are very strict Christians still. But they love me to death and they love the fact that I'm Muslim. They will stand up and say in a group of their own congregation that I'm glad my son as a Muslim wouldn't want him any other way. Because before, he did not have any respect for me, even as a Christian, no respect for me. Now as a Muslim, he calls me every day. When I'm sick, he drops everything to come see me across the country. Why? Because his religion tells him he has to. This is a way of life people need. And I'm going to finish. Forgive me for not being able to compose myself. I'm going to finish with a statement of Bernard Shaw, who many of you may have read his works. He said about Muhammad, in Islam, peace be upon him, that if a man like Muhammad were to assume leadership of the world today, he would solve every single problem. He would solve every single one of his problems during his afternoon, cu afternoon cup of tea. This was this man. And this was the religion he founded. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. A man, it was just there wrote a book called The Ranking 100, the most hundred influential people in history. I don't remember his name. It's, on, it's one of those things that I, I've known it forever. And Michael Hart. He chose, he's a Christian. He chose Muhammad as number one. He said, because if you want to know what it means to have smallness of means but greatness of purpose, then go look at Muhammad. And go look at the religion he founded. You find it there. So that's what I'm conveying to you. I'm conveying to you the statements of your colleagues, non-Muslims. Just go do the research for yourself. Like, like Napoleon said, Muta, what can it hurt you? What can it hurt you? It can either be an interesting study that may lead you to understand 10 million people in this country a lot better and 2 billion people in the world a lot better and growing. Statistically, by the year 2015, Muslims will be a majority in the world. Statistically, we will be. So, I mean, it's just going to happen. So you will know them a lot better. Or you may find the truth. And what an amazing, amazing find that would be for such a little sacrifice is opening a book, picking up some papers, meeting a couple people. I thank you for your time and, and, and hope that I have been of benefit. I finish by saying that there is no God worthy of worship except the one true God that created everything. His name is Allah in Arabic, which means the God. And that Muhammad is the last and final messenger to mankind and that Islam is the truth. Thank you very much.